cost accounting 5A process costing equivalent units of production. This is Ken Boyd, owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. What I'd like to do is skip over to uh, a problem that I saw for a student recently that involves uh, some T accounts at the top, but more importantly, it covers the flow of production chart at the bottom. And this is taken from the Horngren Cost Accounting Text, 11th edition, on these pages. And I think the key to this equivalent units, which I think is a hard thing to teach, is understanding and knowing how to set up this chart. So what are we trying to do? Our goal is, is to take our physical units, convert them into equivalent units, which depends on how much of the production is completed, how much of the direct labor and materials, other things, have I put into the product already, which has to do with also with how much money have I spent. And once I get the equivalent units, I can then apply costs to come up with a cost per equivalent unit. And then finally, I can assign the costs to each unit. So equivalent units is, is really to make an apples to apples comparison, an apples to apples comparison of all the units, whether they're partially completed or fully completed. So. The top half of the chart deals with the movement of units. The bottom half of the chart deals with costs and how we assign costs. So, starting at the top of the chart, we have units that we need to account for, and we have units accounted for, two terms. Units to account for, units accounted for. So. The units can be in one of two places. They're either, when we open the factory doors at the beginning of the period, and we have, we're making blue jeans, we have blue jeans that have been partially sewn and partially put together, but they're not complete yet. That's work in process by definition. So let's assume that at the beginning of the period, we have work in process of 400,000 units. And during the month, let's say that we started 800,000 pairs of jeans. So when we opened the factory door on the first day of the period, we had 400,000 in partially completed jeans. We had 800,000 in pairs of jeans that we started during the period. So that's what we need to account for. We need to account for a total of 1.2 million units, which in this case is pairs of blue jeans. Where did those 1.2 million units go? Well, <clears throat> Some were completed and transferred out during the period, which means they were boxed up and ready to be sold to a client or finished goods. When we close the factory doors at the end of the month, any pairs of jeans that weren't complete yet ended up in ending work in process. And I put in parentheses here that the ending work in process jeans are 25% complete. Now I know some questions will distinguish between percentage complete for direct material and direct labor. So I'm going to make it simple and say they're 25% complete for all costs, regardless of what type. So 600,000 went out the door as finished goods. 600,000 were in ending work in process and were 25% done. And so that's how we get units accounted for 1.2 million. So your first <coughs> check figure is <clears throat> do the units to account for agree in total to the units accounted for? And once we know the flow of the units, we can now take the units accounted for section and come up with equivalent units. And this involves taking the physical units and multiplying them by the percentage they're completed. By definition, if they're finished goods, they're completed. Finished goods are 100% complete. So by definition, we're going to take 600,000 and multiply it by 100%. So our equivalent units are 600,000. Our units in work and process are only 25% done. So we multiply 600,000 in blue times 25% and we get 150,000 equivalent units. 
So the bottom line in the unit section is, is that we have completed work to date on the equivalent of 750,000 units. Work done to date in red. We have completed work and incurred costs to the tune of 750,000 equivalent units, assuming an apples to apples comparison between partially completed and, and finished goods. The second part of the chart says, let's look at costs. Well, we had some costs when we opened the factory doors at the beginning of the period. We had spent money on 48, we have spent $48,000 on the pairs of jeans lying on the factory floor, partially completed. We call that work in process. During the period, we started 800,000 pairs of jeans. We had costs during the period in dollars of 53,800. So when I add that up, the costs incurred to date, 101,800 which I simply copied over here, because these are all dollars. I then take my work to done units, and I put it down on the line in red, equivalent units of work done 750, and then if I take the sum of the costs, 101, 800, and I divide by equivalent units that are completed, I get 14 cents cost per equivalent unit of 14 cents. That's how much cost I can I can stick to each of those equivalent units that I figured out up here. The last step is to say well now I need to assign costs because again some of the costs were completed were for completed genes that were um, completed and transferred out, finished goods. And some of the costs are still in work in process, so the question is how much? And actually I need to change this from 12 cents to 14, so we're consistent. So in the first case we're going to multiply 14 cents times 600,000 equivalent units in blue, and we get costs assigned of 81,440 to the units that are in finished goods. And I have 600,000 times 14 cents right here. For work in process, and I put down 750 physical units in any work in process, I take Let's ignore that. That's a copy from another text, sorry. 240,000 units in ending work in process times 14 cents. Let's see what we did there. 14 cents in green times 150,000 in blue. This is copied from another problem. Let me fix that. 150,000 units times 14 cents. We'll click on that again just to be clear. 14 cents in green times 150,000 equivalent units gets us 20,360 is the cost assigned to work in process. And if I add those two up, I get another check figure, 101,800 that agrees to the costs incurred up here. So if I've taken all my costs, that I, all the checks that I've written, and I can see using equivalent units up at the top, and using the cost per equivalent unit of 14 cents in green. If I use that to allocate my costs, I end up with the total allocation being the total amount of money spent. The total allocation of costs equals the checks that I wrote. Click on that one more time. Here is the completed units Cost equivalent unit 600,000 in green times 14 cents, cost per equivalent unit, 81,440. Cost per equivalent unit in green, 14 cents times the work in process equivalent units of 150, 20,360. And if I add them up, I get 101,800 
So your check figures finally for this problem are, do all the physical units I have to account for get accounted for between finished goods and work in process? And do all my costs, the checks that I wrote, get allocated? That's the end of Part 5A. For more videos that are not on the web, you'll find a web page that lists all the videos by topic. You can access them either through spreadsheet templates or the videos themselves. Here's our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You, can, word. you can email me for a complete list of YouTube videos. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the website. Here's our email and phone. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.